Welcome to another podcast of Homes on Homes podcast. I am filming at the Improve Canada Centre and right now there's construction happening. I heard a couple of tools. I think somebody's building. You hear them right now. They're building something. That's my kind of music. As a matter of fact, that's what you hear on the show day in and day out. Today's podcast is all about television. Today I have Craig Juner with me. He's from Blue Ant Media and we're going to be talking a lot about Blue Ant Media in a moment and streaming TV and the world of changing. But I did not get the email today about wearing overalls. And you are wearing overalls, white t-shirt, which I always used to wear. Do you feel like a contractor? Yes, sir, I do. You feel comfortable? Pretty comfortable. Then you're going to have to come to work with me. No problem. Happy to. Do you have a background in the industry at all? Uh, no formal background in the industry. Can you swing a hammer? I can. Absolutely. And you can use a broom? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll start tomorrow. <laughs> That's how we make money. You know, I remember when I first started television and it was all an accident. I'm not the kind of guy to be on TV. I am a contractor, have been all my life. As a matter of fact, I started a, a big company at 19 years old. Uh, Try win general contracting at the time. That was many, many years ago. Had 14 employees under me. I told the owner at the time, I'm the boss. Nobody tells me what to do and I'm making money. And two and a half years later, uh, we ended up separating. That was fine. I went on my own. And then years down after doing construction after construction, I meet someone because they get my name and number through a, 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 a lumber yard that I, I was always at. You know. You want something, call Mike Holmes. So this call came, comes in from HGTV that they need a guy there to work on Just Ask Yonics. That was the television show at the time. They need someone in the background. I go in, ask a lot of questions, like one of the main questions, how much do I get to be here for a week to do this? <laughs> and I laughed when they told me the money. I said, I am so busy doing construction right now but I like the energy of the people around the cameras. I just did. So I said, okay, as long as I can run my company, I'll do this for one month. You got me for a month, but I gotta be able to run my company while I'm here. And they said, we don't see a problem with that. Make a very long story short. I would build the sets in the background for Yanni, because I would tell him what to, you know, don't say that in construction, <laughs> this, is, this is how we do it. And he actually loved me being there. Before you know it, I'm on Linda Reeves and uh, they're just testing me on camera to be on her show. And one of the big guys there wanted me to build him a custom straw bale home, which I've never done a straw bale home. And to be honest, I studied straw bale for a while. Uh, make a long story short, again, I was in his office at HGTV and I said to him, we need to do steel reinforcement here. We'll have to spray foam, all of this. And I'm explaining why I want to do what I want to do. And I understand you want a Fred Flintstone home. That was the whole point. He jumped up literally from his desk and said, no, I know exactly what I want. This is, this is how we're going to do this. I've been on this for years now. And right away it hit my not so funny side because I didn't like somebody trying to tell me what to do when it, when it comes to construction. So I said to him at the time, I said, Mike, his name was Mike. I said, Mike, I said, this reminds me of the shows on your channel. There is no permits. I can tell by watching them. There is no information. It's all about the, the, the couches and the countertops and the cabinets. And to me, that doesn't make good television. So I realized after 30 minutes, I pretty much had diarrhea of the mouth. And I said, I'm really sorry, Mike. I've got diarrhea of the mouth. I got to go. So I got up to leave. And he jumps up from his desk and he says, I want to pilot right away. I laughed a little bit simply because I said, I'm not a television guy. I'm a contractor. You want to do a show? I can probably work behind the scenes. And I left. Months go by and he keeps bugging me to do a television show. And he just, it just keeps happening. And then finally he said to me, and this is how he got me. He said, Mike, I noticed you like to teach one family at a time. And I said, that's what this is about. And he said, how would you like to teach everyone at once? Okay. I own the show or I'm not doing it. And he said, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And bam, next thing you know, we, uh, we're doing a television show. And uh, I'll never forget, I handed the pilot in September 11th, 2001. Right after the plane hit the tower. 
Then the second plane hits the tower, and I'm at HGTV studio, because at the time I was building a tool room there, designed it all for the television shows and everything. And I thought, well, there goes the television show opportunity, and it didn't. You know, it took time, but things changed. And what a uh, anniversary date for me to never forget, by the way. And then television hit, and then it broke every single record on the channel, and then it went around the world. So it became a phenomenon, and uh, and I'd like to think that it was all about my show related to everyone out there. Absolutely. They know someone that's been taken advantage of by a contractor, they've been taken advantage of by a contractor, and or they want to learn about what is important in their home. Hence, how many years later, you know, 22 years later, filming 20 years on television, and I'm sitting down talking to you about new streaming TV. Tell me a bit about the streaming TV. So it's an interesting evolution that's happening in television today. Much like we've seen in uh, other mediums like radio, there's been a huge shift in just the way people have consumed content. You've moved from free access to content way back in the day via rabbit ears um, to, you know, we went through the evolution where you have access via subscription or S Specialty channels. Specialty channels, yep, through Rogers, through Bell, through various platforms. And then the rise of the SVODs as well. So this is your video on demand, your Netflixes, your Disney Pluses. And you're now at a point where there's so much competition and so much... Well, here's how I see it. Yep. I see it that more and more people don't want to pay that massive cable monthly bill. And streaming, free streaming, is starting to get everyone's attention. They're going to pay for Wi-Fi for their house anyways. And they don't mind watching about six minutes worth of commercial time to actually get the shows that they want to see that, in essence, in the long run, doesn't cost them money because they're paying for the Wi-Fi. So to me, it is free TV and a great avenue of this next direction. Oh, you're absolutely right. I think that's one of the real benefits, especially at this moment in time where inflation's running wild. It's harder and harder for people to afford you know, recurring monthly bills, the free streaming option is something that's just completely accessible to everybody, whether it be through your smart TV, a connected device, or just the internet. Um, and it brings back that good old fashioned, you know, free TV via rabbit ears, uh, just over the internet. It's really a, an exciting place to be um, experimenting in. It's funny, you talk about rabbit ears. Rabbit ears, what are rabbit ears? When I was a kid, there were that little antenna at the back of the TV, you had to go up and adjust it. They became fancy after that, I'm not kidding. Even really big looking, they still did the same thing, same crap, different file. But you adjusted it because you were over uh, an antenna. That's what you're doing. Not cable, we didn't have cable then. As a matter of fact, I remember the first cable box was corded to the TV, yep. a 20 channel box. We used to fight over this box all the time. I've got it. No, I've got it. So, you know, you could reach over and push the button, just piss off your brother or your sister, and that's exactly what we did. Nowadays, we got remotes for everything. It's on my phone. I can control the lights in my house. I can control the doors. I know when you're coming and when I'm going. It's, it's, that's the new world of control. So just so everyone knows, I did just recently sign a deal with Blue Ant Media, and I'm rather excited about it. Uh, Homeful is a channel. Tell me about Homeful, because as far as I'm concerned, it should be Homesful, but we'll keep playing with this. <laughs> Homeful is going to be the channel that I'm going to be on everywhere for you, free, and that's yep. the greatest idea. Tell me a little bit about Homeful. Well, Homeful is a free global streaming brand that brings together the best of DIY, design, renovation, and real estate all under one banner. And we're gonna be home to the large majority mm -hmm. of your prior catalog. Now, Homeful, what I like about what I'm hearing and why I did this is because it's not just construction. You know, uh, specialty channel for cooking, specialty channel for this, specialty channel for that. It's all really under one umbrella. It's all about Homeful. Yep. And people can watch the show for design, they can watch it for almost anything, or many of the shows that they've loved all over these years, such as home shows. How can we tell everyone, how do they get home for? Well, that's the great thing. It's just the accessibility of the free streaming services today. 
So whether that be through your smart TV, through your connected device, or just via the internet, these channels are available, and they're in a format that it, it's very comfortable for people to find. It's the good old fashioned TV guide, it's that lean back experience, it's full of a bunch of shows and personalities like Mike that people will recognize, and you just sit there, you click, and you watch. I'm excited to talk about the first season that we're going to be doing for Blue Ant Media. It's going to be me, my son, my daughter, and, and we're doing the same thing, but we're going back to really feel-good stories. So it's going to be it's just about making it right. I mean, that's what I care about. And so it doesn't have to be a, just a bad contractor. It could be a, you know, someone down on their luck. It could be, uh, I don't care what it is. As long as the story is good enough that people are still gonna learn from what I do, People are going to love the show because it's such a happy ending, and that's the wonderful thing about it. It's, I mean, after all these years of me doing this, you know, I've said, why, why do I keep doing this? And it's always at the end, when we give the house back, that it reminds me why we do what we do. How many times have Mike and Sherry actually walked through the house and gone, oh, they deserve this. These are really nice people. And, and that keeps me going. That, to me, is making it right. Well, I think that's one of the special things about everything you've done through your career is it has that undertone to it, that heart with it. And I think that we're in a really unique time on the heels of the pandemic where there's been a boom of people taking on their own renovations or contractors coming in and fixing up people's homes. And we're headed towards some turbulent waters ahead. So I think it's the perfect time. I'm getting more stories lately of the feel-good stories, that it's not a bad construction or bad contractor. Uh, one that I would love to do is this, this beautiful boy. And he's watched my show for years. Uh, his mom, he's a bit of a, how do I say it? Uh, mom has to take care of him. Okay. Um, so she has three or four other kids and she's got her, you know, a, a full job on her, on her hands with the family. And the son wants to learn how to cook. He wants to do things and he, he really requires a lot of attention from mom. They just want a new kitchen. That's all they want is a new kitchen. And he wants to meet me more than anything And because he would go crazy to meet me. This is what I'm reading when the stories get submitted to me. I think that's a wonderful story. She needs help in the family and she's not asking for help. She just wants me to help her son in a long run, which helps the family. And it's, that's the type of shows that I'm getting lately or requests that I'm getting lately that I would really like to step up and do something about. Um, platforms that people can watch the show on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can certainly talk about Roku is a great uh, platform for people to watch on, uh, Samsung TV Plus, um, Pluto TV. Uh, really, your options are endless when it comes to the ability to access this content. So what you're saying is Homeful will be on many other platforms like Roku, like uh, Free TV, is it Free TV? Samsung Free TV. Samsung. Yep. Yep. So the space is evolving so fast. What I would recommend is that viewers check out homefulltv.com for the latest information on where the channel is accessible. And you can find out what platform it's on. Exactly. What platform, what device, how to access the content in whatever territory you're in. So over the years, I've watched the changes through the specialty channels. At first, I was with Lions Atlantis. Yep. Then Lions Atlantis, and ironically, I, I met Michael McMillan. <laughs> and he owned the specialty channels, him and a few other people. Then it went to, uh, my goodness. I was there at the time, it went to? Global. Exactly, Can West. So it went to Global, yep. it Can West, and then changes again through, I guess, you know, just, just times and ups and downs uh, of economy. Uh, it changed again and it changed again. And every time it changed for me, I gotta be honest, it changed, I don't wanna say that dynamics, but the relationship with the network at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, some were good, some were not so good. Yep. But that's just, I guess, the nature of the beast. If you sell a house, the house changes name. Uh, he may want to renovate, she may want to renovate, it changes the look of the home. And, and trying just to do a comparison on that, that's mm. exactly what happened. Now, I thought I'd get the chance to maybe disappear by an island and you know just go live on the <laughs> island, but no. We're gonna be doing a few more years of television. And we're going to be doing it with Blue Ant Media. We have a ton of ideas. Uh, the, the first episode you'll be able to watch, or first season you'll be able to watch next year. 
you're going to be able to see all my shows anytime you want, right? Anytime they can pick the show, watch it. So that's a lot of shows. It is. It's uh, a lot. It's a great library to be attached to. And yeah, either if you want to watch it in the live stream, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy that way. Or if you want to experience, experience your library on demand, you've got that option as well. See, I like that. It doesn't cost anyone any more money. Exactly. It's almost like free homes. <laughs> I am curious about one thing. Um, you guys approach me, and I'm curious as to why you want my shows on Homefall. A few minutes ago, you were talking about that early gold rush in cable television, where there was just this early launch of services that picked different genres, planted flags in those genres, and then evolved to become you know, household names, those channels themselves. That's actually the space that we're in in the free streaming environment today, where everybody's trying to go out, plant a flag, and define themselves. And what better way to define yourselves with a household name, a brand like Mike Holmes, attached to your channel? Speaking of homes full, as I was talking with Craig in the background, I saw my son up by the hot tubs outside. I think he was thinking about buying a hot tub. Welcome here, Holmes. Holmes? Yeah, it's good to be here. I mean, I was lost. I was just walking around. I was like, wait, that kind of looks like my dad. And I was looking at you, and then I saw my dad was here. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm not sure which homes to talk to. I got you here, the bobblehead, the sign up there. There's just like, and, and, and Craig, who could. You pass, it's like a stunt double. I'm like, I'm not sure. If I do a quick pass, I don't know. Mike, meet Craig. Craig, meet Mike. Pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you too, Craig. So we're going to do a little bit of fun here. Michael, do you know how many shows we've done? Let's see, just off the top of my head, I feel like we've helped something like 335 homeowners. Uh, so that would probably be over 200 shows. So we have done, and it's been a lot of homeowners, 284 shows, 52 Mike Holmes inspections. So 52 episodes of Holmes inspections. Yep. Uh, 284, I thought it was a lot more, but if you think about it, how many seasons of, my goodness, you know, from home free right to, that was 21 houses I gave away in yeah. the United States on yeah. Fox. Um, handyman Challenge, how many right. seasons did I do of the Handyman Challenge? But not just that, like people forget too, it's like 284, maybe it doesn't sound like this huge number, but it's not like we renovate these homes in a day. No. It takes six to eight weeks sometimes, a year, depending on the scope of work, what we uncover. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of homes. And did you see that I pulled out the exact number there? Someone told me off camera how many, how many <laughs> oh, people. Of so course. I, yeah. like, of I don't course. actually know. <laughs> yeah. We've helped a lot of people. Helped a lot of people. Feels good, doesn't it? It feels great. I mean, that's initially why I started doing this because I worked for him for a summer. And then I remember doing fences. We did 52 fences uh, in a subdivision. And I remember after that, the homeowners being so grateful and being like, thank you, you know, you've changed our lives. And I was like, first of all, I like working with my hands. Yeah. I love moving, I love being physical, but the homeowners just seeing how grateful they were. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. We're gonna hire Craig, it looks good in the overalls. Yeah, that's half the battle. Put me to work. Yeah. <laughs> how many times do you think you've said, make it right over the years? Holy cow. Probably 20 today. <laughs> uh, Limitless. Yeah, just today alone, I probably did 20. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't answer that. I said it how many times to you as a kid? Make it right, Mike. I've heard it many times. I could not guess. It's like one of those things like how many jelly beans are in the jar? I could estimate I'm probably far off. <laughs> All right, one more for you. If you had to pick, uh, what would be your favorite descriptor? You know, I talk about zones a lot, I love zones and zones. I mean, if you come to my property, you'll see an awful lot of zones. But I think what I would say more than anything is that slick, that sexy. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, you hear zones a lot. Yep. And maybe we could do like a homes on zones. I don't know, I think there's something. <laughs> zones there. on homes. Zones on homes even. Uh, but homes it was- zones. Yeah, it was slick at one point. Yep. And now it's, that's sexy. Well, it just falls out of my mouth. It's yeah. not like, a, I don't do this. What should I say today? I don't do that. <laughs> mm. Well, the truth is, I, I, over the years, people have, that have stopped me to say hi and you know, want to take a picture, shake my hand, the majority is all about, the show is real. I can tell it's real. The show is real, isn't it? But you've got the odd person, and that's the majority of the people that believe the show is real. Then you've got the odd person going, you don't read scripts, do you? It's like, eh, no. I don't read scripts. 
I am a contractor on television trying to help a homeowner and educate you by helping them. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people think like, oh, you guys, they're, they're actors. They're all actors, but it's, we, it's really just follow the puck. And we've created a system now where it's our director knows. Like, we, they, you know, they'll have a goal of what they want out of a day. But there's sometimes our director, Sheila, is like, there wasn't anything exciting found behind the walls. Like, we, you just, but it's not always the case. We can't always find something terrible in a home, which is nice for us. Uh, I wish that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Most times we find still a lot of terrible stuff, but sometimes it's a little dry. rare. It's rare. Well, I think it is that level of authenticity that's really led to the success of, of Mike Holmes over the years. You know, in my mind, it makes me, because I, I produced the show, so I became a producer, which I'm not a producer, I'm a contractor. But it made it clear to me to actually find somebody that knows what the hell they're talking about instead of a good looking guy or girl that you want to do something on a show that has no idea about the subject. So isn't it easier just to work with someone that knows what they're talking about? Day one, I remember filming and they were just playing like, what Mike gonna say, you know, like feed them lines, feed them lines. And I was getting rather uncomfortable. <laughs> and then finally I just stopped and I just started. So I went through the house, this is wrong, this is wrong, and I started talking to the homeowners. And everyone stood there and went, oh, this is how we're gonna do the show. <laughs> this is how we're gonna do it. Just, just follow Mike. Yeah. And it, it got to the point where the cameraman, at one time, it was Blair Locke, the first cameraman. Great guy, I love him. We did the Holmes dance, call it, because he knew exactly where I was gonna go, how I was going to do it, and he knew just how to silhouette all the way around me. And this became a wonderful thing. It, it wasn't hard. I mean, once I was done, I was done. I got nothing more to say unless, you know, the homeowner's still talking to me. Boom, that segment's done. On to the next one. Rip this apart. How many times? Just keep it real. And the show to this day is still very real. Yep. Ray Except Holmes? for me, I'm CGI. They don't, I don't actually, <laughs> they just add me in and post. Yeah. yeah, it feels real, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm actually five foot eight. So, yeah. Yeah, I know that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got a question from one of your viewers that was curious. You've dealt with a lot of shoddy work that contractors have done throughout the years. Have you ever run into one of those contractors? That's a funny question. Uh, only once did a contractor actually drive back to the house because he heard I was there. Pulled up to the site, got out, and said he wanted to speak to me. And I walked out, cameras automatically start rolling, which I don't care. That's not the, st the kind of stuff I want to do. This isn't W5, you know, W Homes. That's not what it is. Why don't you have a seat? Yeah, but <laughs> I walked out and I talked to him, and he kept claiming I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And I said, what do you do for a living? And he told me, and without saying anything too bad about him, I said, look, I said, you did a lot wrong here, but for you to stand in front of me means you at least give, you care about something. Yeah. But you're going to see on the show what you did wrong because we don't make up anything. So as I pull it apart, we're gonna talk about what you did wrong. And hopefully you learn from this and you don't do it again. I end up shaking the guy's hand, he left. But you know what I really wanna do? I want more than anything just to say to him, look, are you doing this on purpose? Like, do you really want to go to jail? Is, are you doing this? One of the shows we did this year, the contractor broke up with the homeowner. I, I'm leaving you. Uh, I'm uncomfortable in your home right now. And the, and the homeowner said to me right at the beginning of the show, he broke up with us. I love this homeowner because he didn't give up. I reported him to uh, the electrical you know, ESA, which they can go after him and find him for touching electrical he shouldn't have touched. I reported him to another part of the government because I had a bad feeling he's been doing this over and over again. Mike, the homeowner, found five other families, brought them all to the police, and they went and arrested him. So he is actually being arrested he has lost his license to work. He is shut down. He's shut down on social media. So I, I'm, you know, I, I do have to say that every once in a while, the real bad guys like this guy has been removed. For how long? That's a great question. Yeah, I mean, I'd say for me, the majority of people who uh, 
you know, are brave and like to talk trash is online. A lot of keyboard warriors out there. A lot of people are like, you're fake, do this, cut your hair. And I'm like. <laughs> there was a couple of times we were filming while the camera's rolling outside, a couple cars drove by. And of course you've got a couple of guys in there yelling out some wild things. Well, Enough for me to walk out to the street and of course the cameramen come, but they don't turn around and come back. Got another viewer question from you guys. One that's sort of close to my heart as a TV person. Guilty pleasures, TV shows. What does Mike Holmes like to watch when he's watching TV and sitting back? You what's know, what, what's one that maybe people would be surprised of? I love education. So I watch a lot of history of the world in two hours. Uh, I'm a freak for, you know, the planet is 4.5 plus billion years old, how it was formed, what's happening throughout the millions and millions of years. How long has man been on the planet? We've, we've been on the planet, you know, this much in comparison. Did we live with the dinosaurs? No. No. What's the matter with people? We didn't live with dinosaurs. Well, they were what, 80 million years ago? That's not true. Because alligators and crocodiles, technically. They, they, okay, but they're not dinosaurs. Well, kind of. Yeah, okay, but we'll do this and we do this all the time. That's about what I watch. I watch all kinds of things like that, which, which helps me with science and engineering about houses, weather patterns, what's coming, what people. How many times have I said, we're not building for tomorrow? Let me tell you something. Tomorrow's not good when it comes to weather. Have you noticed more hurricanes happening and tornadoes here where we live. We're not used to tornadoes. We're getting more and more. Why are we not building smarter? And we better start, because I can only film so much. All right, I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna ask Mike Jr. the same question. See, guilty pleasures are supposed to be shows that maybe you're not so proud of talking about. And there's a few shows uh, that I feel a little guilty about. Um, my wife doesn't like to watch anything scary, okay. so typically like, I lean towards like, thrillers and like, a mystery, something that make you think. So we end up watching like, sitcoms. I even went down the Kardashian rabbit hole for a You bit. did? She was putting it on, I'm like, this is stupid. And then uh, that transitions to, I can't believe Kim went through that. <laughs> Courtney was such a good support system. Oh my God. Yeah, listen, I, it's, not, it's not my proudest. I do feel a little guilty about it, but uh, uh, it, it's, listen, it's entertaining. This is, uh, there are television shows I like to call, maybe I shouldn't be so mean. Uh, it's just entertaining. It, there's not much to it. And again, my wife would put it on, I'd be there. I'm not putting it on when she's not around, but I'm also, I feel a little guilty about it. Okay, let's, let's reverse this. How about you, Craig? All right, well, I'm, I'm inspired by your honest answer to that, because if I was going to traditionally answer it, I'm actually a big documentary watcher, so I would probably line up along the sort of content you were talking about. So you didn't watch any of the Kardashians? Well, technically, I'm not big into the Kardashians, uh, but there's a show called Love After Lockup, mm. which is completely outside of my traditional wheelhouse. It is a train wreck of a series of... Is this where someone goes to jail, women want to fall in love with them? Is that what we're talking it, about? It writes itself, doesn't it? And it really does. then the inmate gets out and hilarity ensues. Oh boy. Mm. And that made television? That made television. I think they're on season five or six at this point. Get Multiple out. Multiple spin-offs. Yep. Get out. Well, That's like worst driver. Like, how, uh, that, yeah, come yeah. on. All of these like dating shows are, are huge right now. Like, uh, what, uh, Love is Blind or... Um, yep. 30 day fiance, and you're yep. like, it's like a train wreck. You can't turn away. You're like, this is stupid. And then you're like, I cannot believe she's dating him right now. Like, after he said that, I'm out. Yeah, I don't watch in. them. Yeah. I must be too busy. I must be too busy. Yeah. Thanks everyone for watching another podcast of Homes on Homes. My God, do you know how long it's been? Homes on Homes? 23, on Homes on Homes? 23 years? 22 years of filming, 23 years of filming, going on 23 years of filming, but mm -hmm. a, a whole bunch, and we're still going. Yeah. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Holmes. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Kardashians, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not my proudest for sure. But listen, we're being honest here. This is what it's about: yep. breaking down. Let it out. Yep. <laughs> Letting it out. Let it out. It's a safe no. space. No. Never watched it. No, no, I would. <laughs>
This episode is brought to you by Improve Canada, Canada's largest home improvement center. Check out improvecanada.com. If you like the show, check out the episode page on makeitright.ca for more tips.